In other words, if I get offended by something, but nobody else does, does that fall under the line of hate speech? Um, it's a tough question. Sure. Yeah. Um. Or I don't like them. So I don't like people who do this thing. Any negative attribute about a group of people publicly Okay, so that might be what we call hate speech. But that would still be often First Amendment protected because it's still an expression of my opinion of what I like or don't like or what I think about other people. My name is Salim Juma, your host of Salim and Dion. And today, we're at the beautiful University of Washington campus and we're going to be asking students here to define hate speech. Now, as you know, hate speech and freedom of speech have been in the news numerous, numerous times lately and Basically, the whole reason that we're trying to get to the bottom of this is we want people to understand that why it's a slippery slope and people are fighting against hate speech laws. Because you can't really define hate speech. I mean, how far does that actually go, right? What crosses the line? Who objectively decides what hate speech is? We go to the University of Washington's campus to find out. Now, if you guys want us to keep doing this every single day and uploading every single day, make sure you support us on Patreon. Make sure you support us on Subscribestar. Check us out on Super Chat when we do our live streams. If you want to help the channel, make sure that you do that so we can continue to do this. And not only that, we'll be able to do it even more. Me and Dion, as always, want to make this our full-time jobs. With that said, make sure you watch the video, hit that notification bell and the subscribe button, and stay classy, Seattle. Okay, hi, my name is Dion from Slim and Dion, and your name is? Daniel Peterson. Daniel Peterson, that's a cool name. Are you related any at all to Dr. Jordan Peterson? Uh, no, I'm not. <laughs> that was a joke. <laughs> so my question for you today is, what do you define as hate speech? Um, I don't know, uh, I'm not a lawyer. Sure, I mean like your personal opinion. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I think it's pretty contextual. I don't think that there's a one size fit all rule. Okay. So, for example, um, like let's say a Donald Trump supporter uh, gets offended by someone saying, well, he looks like an orange toad. And I could say, well, that's hate speech, and then therefore it gets you thrown in jail. Like, do you think that would be exactly fair for, for everybody else that doesn't define that statement as hate speech? I don't quite follow you. Can you say that again? So, in other words, if I get offended by something, but nobody else does, does that fall under the line of hate speech? Um, it's a tough question. Sure. Yeah. Um. I mean, it depends a lot on the context and maybe the, your history with this individual. Sure. Um, but in general, that doesn't sound like hate speech. Okay. Um, but, you know, there could be modifying factors. Mm -hmm. So I'll give you some context on some things that have happened in the United Kingdom. So um, you know what misgendering is? Uh, yeah. Okay, so uh, people have literally been arrested and jailed for intentionally misgendering someone. And so do you think that falls on the line of hate speech? And if so, why or why not? I mean, I don't know the details of those cases. Sure. Um, it could possibly fall under hate speech if it was in a context of ongoing harassment. Okay, so in your opinion, so you're basically saying an ongoing harassment would fall under hate speech as long as, so as long as it's ongoing. I mean, so we're parsing legal terms here. Sure. Um, which is not my specialty. Sure. Um, but, you know, ongoing harassment could include um, threats of violence. Um, it could include workplace harassment. Okay. Um, so, uh, the set and setting in which these statements were made could tip it over to hate speech or not to hate speech. Okay. Um, yeah. Cool. So, do you think we should have lawmakers in the United States specifically? Because um, our Constitution, the First Amendment says the, the government does not have the right to take away our freedom of speech. That's, that's the First Amendment. Do you think we should have lawmakers 
regulate free speech and define hate speech for other people? Um, so I think that, um, I think the fact that there are laws against hate speech, I think that's a good thing. Okay. Um, and I think that, um, there are, you know, sometimes speech is not just speech if it's in the context of other actions and extenuating circumstances. Like inciting like violence. That. Perhaps, yeah. Okay. Um, and I think that um, deciding what's hate speech and not hate speech is uh, kind of an ongoing political project that citizens have to hash out with each other. And I think it's totally appropriate that you know, things said in one context or in one historical era or another historical era. Cool. So but that all comes together when deciding. Okay. So you talked about context, and yeah. I've been hearing that a lot today. So what about stand-up comedians? So their context is literally to get paid for the jokes that they're making. Right. So what does that fall under? <laughs> like, like, let's say, say for example, a stand-up comedian says the same exact thing that someone else is inciting violence across the, the United States. Yeah. Is it the same thing? I mean... I mean, under, under the so hate I, speech law, it so would I be the same thing. what I'm thing. saying is you can't judge a statement in isolation. You know, sure. you can't look at a quote that someone said, you know, in one context that may be hate speech if mm -hmm. they're, you know, talking to a like-minded friend versus, you know, shouting it out on a YouTube channel, right. for example. Right, but the problem is, Things are taken out of context way too much. Sure. That's a really big problem. So if I, I think that if we let lawmakers decide what's hate speech, because again, a stand-up comedian could say the same exact thing yeah. and, and everybody would laugh. But in New York, they, somebody else could say the same exact thing and but intentionally incite violence. But sure. the stand-up comedian would also get arrested or fined or whatever because of that statement. You see what I'm trying to get at here? Yeah, I mean, um, like I said, I'm not a legal expert, but sure. I think when people decide these things, um, I think that they take context into account, and I don't think that when people say that, that you know, they judge hate speech or not hate speech based on just that quotation. So when you say, you know, someone got in trouble for saying something in one context and then someone else got in trouble for saying the same thing in different context, I don't think that that's necessarily inappropriate. Okay. Cool. Well, that pretty much wraps it up for uh, me. One thing that we're worrying about today, or we're wondering about today, we're asking about what is hate speech and how do we define it? Okay. So we're not talking about talking about the weather. We're not talking about I hate chocolate or uh, I hate traffic. We're talking about directing speech at an individual or maybe even a group of individuals. For example, if I say, I hate people who burn American flags, then I'm referring to a group of individuals. And especially if I talk about a specific individual, but I think that we're saying groups of individuals. So if I say, I hate people who burn American fl flags, then I'm describing something negative about them, but I haven't gotten there yet. I should say something like, because they're unpatriotic or because they don't care about other people or because they are in Or I just don't like them. Or I don't like them. So I don't like people who do this thing. Any negative attribute about a group of people publicly, okay, so that might be what we call hate speech. But that would still be often First Amendment protected because it's still an expression of my opinion of what I like or don't like or what I think about other people. Much better lighting. So. Uh, if I am expressing my own opinion and, and it's sincere, then in a lot of places that's still protected speech. And so I might have to go a little further. I might have to say that we should harm these people in a specific way. So that, inciting violence. That might yeah. be enough to get me into court yeah. and maybe even into jail in a lot of places. Because it's not protected under the First Amendment. Not here in America and in Australia there are lots of protections for speech, but they won't protect that. Yeah. And that's good. We shouldn't protect inciting violence. Ooh, that's a tough one. So, screaming fire in a crowded theater can injure a lot of people. Yes. 
causes panic, people stampede, they stomp on each other. Mm -hmm. But if that's not violent, then we don't block that. So it would still be First Amendment protected speech. Like your theater ticket might say something like, if you yell fire at our crowded theater... We'll throw you out. We'll throw you out or we'll yeah. charge you The government people. may actually protect it, depending on what they decide in court. Yeah. So that's, that's actually really... That's a really... Uh, you've clearly actually thought about this. Uh, so a lot of my interview subjects have been talking about how uh, hate speech is anything that hurts their fifis. So and when I say fifis, I mean feelings, just to clarify. Um, so I'm trying to figure out if we don't really have an objective relative term of what is hate speech. It has no meaning to say it. Yeah. So when you ask me what is hate speech, and I say, despite taking lots of courses in disability, society, communication, our military, I, I can't help you. Yeah. So what is hate speech? Well. I, if you do it, you could get in trouble, but not by the government and maybe not by the university, and then it becomes not clear what that even means. Maybe your friends won't like you if they know what hate speech is. But what it, they can't define it. Nobody has an objective term of what hate speech is. If it's something that offends me, right? If I say, so look, so you some people... You are welcome to be offended by yeah, my flag. Exactly. You are welcome to be right? offended by... You're wearing crimson and gray on the schools, which campus considers the rival to be the Cougars. Yeah. I wear crimson and gray because I went to the other university. Yeah. I went to the rival university. This is to be offensive here. Yeah. No one has walked up to me about it. But this is hate speech. Yeah. And I see what you're getting it, and it really points out the ridiculousness of what their point is. So that's kind of what we're trying to get here and we're trying to make people critically think about it. I would understand inspiring them to critically think. I don't know that I need to ridicule them. I just want them to ponder in such a way that they can articulate what they mean. I do want them to feel better. I want more people to be happy. Yeah. And I wish that they would articulate how they became unhappy. I should have clarified, we don't actually go out and ridicule people for no reason. I mean, when we talk to people, we interview them, like we interviewed a subject that was saying that uh, hate speech is like guns, it's, you know, Comparable, it's comparable to physical violence, and you know we had a nice conversation. I definitely disagree with that, that but yeah, it yeah. certainly uh, inspires some thought. So yeah. I, I'll ponder that for a little while. Yeah. But uh, as long as I don't try to make their position seem ridiculous in the sense that they should be ridiculed, just that I wish that they would articulate what made them unhappy and whether it was internal to themselves, like choosing to be offended, yeah. or whether it was maybe external, like I was trying to offend them. Yeah. And if I was trying to offend them, that's a different issue. Not really about whether they were offended. Apparently, nobody here cares. Yeah. But I sure am trying. Yeah. And then, uh, and and if they're feeling bad because they're feeling bad, that's a them issue. Like if you feel bad, you talk to your psychologist about that, or your friends, or your girlfriend, or boyfriend. I don't really care. But uh, but if you're offended about something I did, and it wasn't intentional, like wearing the wrong colors on a spirited campus, like there's a purple and gold fire hydrant right there. It's purple and gold because that's the colors for here. Yeah. Uh, and I'm wearing crimson and gray over here. If I were to get a photo of me next to that, that should in itself be offensive. And if we posted that at the school I went to, people would recognize what I'm doing there. People here don't seem to notice. So there's two types here. There's me trying to be offensive, and there's maybe you choosing to be offensive because I speak too much or yeah. because I slur in my speech. So that, that, that would be like a you thing. Mm -hmm. And so for me to like lie to you, I'd have to say something not true, and you'd have to believe it. So my question is, how do we, f <laughs> how do we come into a consensus and kind of fix this whole hate speech debacle that's going on in college campuses right now? Clarifying, and I don't mean from the university clarifying its position, because they act out of a position of legal fear. Yeah. Uh, I mean the students clarifying to each other what in their community is considered offensive, but is very likely to make people feel less happy. Right. And that's going to vary from community to community. But it's still legal to express yourself that way if you choose to. The university could ask you to leave, or a student group could ask you to leave one of their meetings, yeah. but uh, they're definitely going to always permit this. Yeah. The university feels that it benefits from the rivalry, so they yeah. will always permit people wearing crimson and gray on their campus. The students are expected at some point to react negatively and maybe like, ask me to leave. But, Can I ask you how you lean politically? Uh, why? Okay, so let's see, we got, um, in Washington state I would probably be called a Republican. Mm -hmm. In New Mexico, I would be called a libertarian. Mm -hmm. In North or South Carolina, I would be called a Democrat. See, I love that. You've actually thought about the, the various, the ways you're represented in different states. Red states, you're going to be a little bit more to the left. A blue state, a deep blue state like this one, you're going to be more to the right. And in somewhere like New Mexico, which is more central, you're going to be a libertarian. I... So here, I would be a Republican. <laughs> which is very, we're in 43rd District. We're yeah. in Washington State's most densely populated district yeah. and a very blue district, like a Bernie contributing perhaps the winner in the country. Yeah. And so not just for this county, but this part of this county was way blue. And so my position, which is probably pretty close to the middle, turns out to look extremely red. Yeah. 
and then among my family members who support, say, President Trump, I'm considered to be like an opponent. To so so if, if you're in the middle, it's, it's tough living in our society right now because of the polarization. Well, you know, that's kind of why me and Dion do this. Like, I, I think he's a little bit further right, right than I am. I'm pretty center right, but I also support President Trump and I support the policies. Um, I don't support everything that he does, but, uh, you know, being a moderate and even being center left or center right at this point. Crazy. Yeah. Yeah, being a moderate here makes you seem crazy. Yeah. That's, to me, it's, it's wild. So for people to think that you're insane for not having a poll position, it's just yeah. it's wild. Well, the polarization in this country needs to be fixed. But hey, thank you for your interview. Really, this was good. What do you define as hate speech? Hate speech? Um, I guess, I don't know, just any speech that's kind of like derogatory. Just like just attacking a person for who they are, I guess. Sure. Uh, can you give me an example? I guess just maybe like something that would be like racist, for example. I guess. I don't know. It's tough to say. Sure. So, I mean, yeah, I mean, it is tough to say because, uh, I mean, hate speech can be defined in multiple different ways, right? Yeah. Um, but should we do anything to regulate that? Should we put it in laws? Because our, our Constitution literally says that the government does not have the right to take away said freedom of speech. That's the yeah. First Amendment. Should we have lawmakers regulate it? Um, I guess it's also like a difficult question to answer because mm -hmm. like in some cases like hate speech can just be like really damaging to others so I can see where the idea comes from. Mm -hmm. but, so it depends on what the regulation would be and how they would go about it. Sure. So in places like the UK and Canada for example, mm -hmm. so do you know what misgendering is? Uh, yeah. Okay. So when uh, people in the UK, three people have actually been arrested and jailed. Mm -hmm. Uh, for intentionally misgendering someone. And, I mean, that's a pretty bad thing, though, because, I mean, that's their, I mean, well, if they were in the United States, that'd be their right to freedom of speech. So, should we do something like that? If it's, like, intentional? Um, <laughs> I, guess, I mean, it's a difficult yeah, question, yeah. yeah. Like, I guess it would, like, depend on the context, once again. Mm -hmm. I don't know, I guess, just, like, how damaging the speech is. What context? It's like really convoluted. Right. No, yeah, I, I definitely agree because um, I, I, I personally don't think that we should allow um, people to define it for other people. Because, for example, I'm not easily offended. Um, are, are you easily offended at all? And if you are, that's fine. And if not, that's fine too. Uh, perhaps. No, I don't think so. Cool. So are, are you an Indian? Yeah. Okay. So if, if I were to say something like really racist towards you, which I'm not, but, uh, oh, no thanks, no thanks. Um, if I were to say something really racist towards you and that was actual hate speech, like, um, do, you, like do you think I should be fined or arrested or something like that? I guess it, um, it like really, really depends on contest. Sure, sure. But, yeah, I don't know. That's, and, that's, and it's so hard, though, to find that context, right? Because, um, Everybody's different. That that's kind of the point I'm trying to make here is that um, like if I like I'm I'm personally a Trump supporter, okay. so um, you know if someone said well uh, he looks like an orange toad, then I could say well that offends me, so you should go to jail for that. Like I mean, it could take, it could literally be taken to the out the, to the uh, utmost extreme, to where it, people are like defrauding the system. Wouldn't you agree with that? Um. I guess, but I mean, that is kind of like a different context mm -hmm. than if you would like walk up to like a black person and say something derogatory. Sure. Just because there's like a lot of history behind that. Mm -hmm. Whereas like walking to like a white person, there's not the exact same thing. Sure. So yeah, it's, it's definitely not like completely equal there. Mm -hmm. There's like different contexts based on like historical reasons. Mm -hmm.